Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to be walking through how you can make a fairly simple tile wall using RSS feeds and some of the new features in the latest 923 patch release. I'm going to start by building the wall with a cloner and a shape 3D. The shape 3D is set to sphere by default, so I'm going to swap it out for a plane and remove the subdivisions. Next, I want the cloner to only render on the X and Y axis, so I'm going to set the Z count to 1 and then increase the X and Y count to fill up the gaps. I'll also add a material node and connect it to the shape 3D and set it to double sided, but we'll come back to materials later. The shape 3D itself isn't oriented in the correct direction, so I'll quickly rotate the pitch so it's facing the right way. For building this wall, I'm going to set the grid size mode to size per clone. This will make it easier to set the gap between clones because I can edit it directly rather than estimating a gap based on the clone size and the grid size. I will need to quickly adjust my grid size and clone scale to adapt to this new setting. Lastly, I'll add a camera. This will make it easier to make changes later on now that I know what perspective I'm rendering from. Now let's get into RSS feeds with the RSS feed node. This node will look for an RSS feed and download any text or images contained and allow them to be used in other nodes. I'll start by adding an RSS feed URL from the Notch Instagram feed, but you can use any other RSS feed you find online, although for this tutorial, make sure the RSS feed sends images too. Images need to be stored locally, so you'll need to set a location in the cache directory property. I've got a folder set up directly, so I'm just going to navigate there and select it. It's also worth noting the backup data option. The RSS feed node requires an internet connection to get RSS feed data. But if you lose connection, this option allows you to have some backup data to switch to. The update feed rate is quite slow at the moment too, so I'm going to set that to 1 over 60 or once every second. Right, now that my RSS feed is sorted, I need to load those images and display them on my clones. The easiest way to do this is with the image tile file loader. This node can load all the images the RSS feed will download for us and place them in a single tile sheet texture, which we can then tile onto all of our clones. We don't need to use an RSS feed with this node. We could just direct it to a folder of images with the directory property. But for the brief I've set myself today, I'll connect the RSS feed node to the image tile file loader's RSS feed input. Once it's connected, it may take a few seconds to download all the images and generate the texture. But once this is done, we should see a large 8K image made up of 64 1K images, all from the same RSS feed. If we look closely, a lot of these images are getting letterboxed because of the mismatch between the square tile sizes and the images, which in this case can be any aspect ratio. To fix this, we can change the Use Image Aspect Ratios and Tiles options to Crop. This will scale the images up until their shortest axis fills the tile. Another option worth being aware of is the File Name Filter, which uses regular expressions to filter out images from the tile image. By default, it will filter out all images which aren't JPEGs, so if you notice some images aren't appearing in your texture, they may be getting filtered out. Finally, we should look at the width, height, and num tiles x, y. The balance between these will not only control the number of images in the tile sheet, but also the resolution of each tile. So if you really want some high res tiles, you want to lower the num tile count, or if that doesn't work, increase the width and height of the tile sheet. So now we have some images we can work with, but how do we get those tiles onto the wall we made earlier? Well, we're going to make use of the UV tiling options available in the cloner node. So let's start by applying the tile sheet to the color texture input of the material. Currently, we can see all the tiles. So let's set the UV scale to that of the single tile in the tile sheet. If we check the tile sheet, we left the tile count at eight. So we know we need to zoom in to one eighth of the tile sheet. So I just set that value to one over eight. Notch can pass basic operators in a property box, 
So just writing it in the box can work for both X and Y. So far, the same image is being tiled across all of the shapes. So in the cloner properties, navigate to the UV clone deltas frame. This allows us to change the UV offset of each clone independently so that each image can be tiled separately for each clone. Once again, we only want to tile by one eighth of the tile sheet. So I'll select both properties and type one over eight. Awesome, now our images are tiles, but we can still make it a bit easier. If we needed to change the number of tiles, we would have to change all the properties we just set to reflect this change. So let's set up a simple system to update the UV offset and UV scale automatically. I'll start by adding two extractor nodes and connecting them to both to the image tile file loader. The extractor is great for getting hold of a property inside one node and using it elsewhere. Next, we need to extract the num current tiles X from one extractor and the num tiles Y on the other. This gives us the number of tiles on both axes. So we just need to add two expression modifiers and tell them to do the same one over num tiles operation we were doing earlier, which in this case would be one over value zero. Lastly, set the modifier operation to replace and connect each expression modifier to the relevant X or Y control we need. Now when I change the tile load accounts, the tiles still fit. Now we've sorted out the images, let's take a little bit of time to pretty this up. The clones are completely static, so I'm going to start by adding a sine effector and a turbulence effector, each offsetting the clones on the Z axis. I mainly want the offset with the sine effector, with the turbulence effector acting as a smaller secondary offset. I'm also going to modify the sine effector a bit so it's more interesting and slow down the turbulence effector because it's too fast by default. Next, I want the clones which are further away to be darkened. And while there are a ton of ways to do this, I'm going to do it by using the gradient shading node. Shading nodes can be used to do a lot of complex things with materials. But for now, I'm going to use it to darken all of my clones based on their positions in 3D space. By default, it replaces all colors in the material. But by setting it to multiply, we can darken the colors of the tiles as they move in 3D space. Now we've got the blending sorted, I'm going to fix the rotation heading and lower the blend amount so that the clones don't fall completely into darkness. Finally, let's clean up some of the aliasing with Temporal AA. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.